Day Trading Radio presents a Bright Eye Trading production. Anyway, we're going to start with episode one here on daytradingradio.com. A little late, but I apologize for that, and I appreciate those of you who are sticking with us in the room. And I also appreciate the feedback. I had posted a link in the room a little while ago for a short survey, and uh, I got quite a few responses, and I really do appreciate that, guys. And I noticed that on a few of the responses, there were folks who are actually from overseas, so they're not able to be on here when we're on doing our thing, but they do plan on checking it out later in the forum. So I'll make sure that we get this posted there for future reference. And the theme of tonight's show is this little quote here. To begin, begin. And so we're just going to start off with a little introduction to what this show is going to be about. One thing it's going to be about is the types of tools that we use as traders to trade with. And what I really appreciate also from the feedback is that you guys really embraced the sense of what a tool is for trading. Uh, it's not just the programs that we use, but it includes the new sources that we reference, and it includes a lot of the indicators we use, and a few other things that we'll be talking about on the show. And so let me just take a moment to acknowledge those of you in the room. I appreciate the feedback. And uh, Gas, of course, stepping up to the plate with the first pun of the evening. It didn't take too long to get that out there, did it? <laughs> but uh, thanks to all you guys for tuning in. I'm seeing that we have 100 members in the room, so I'm not going to try to name everybody. But I do appreciate you being here, and uh, I don't want to miss anybody. Uh, not scrolling back through all the names, so... I just want to thank everyone for joining in. As you know, this is my first time doing this solo, so one thing I have to get used to doing is managing all the controls and managing the chat room, and it's going to take me a little getting used to it. I appreciate you guys working with me on that. And if you hear any noises coming in behind me, I've got a fan running, so I hope that's not getting picked up on the microphone too much. And I know RPM's got the bionic ear over there, so he's probably picking up every little twitch and scratch that I do in the in the sound bites. So hopefully that'll work out all right. <laughs> all right, so speeding it up. Well, I wanted to take today to talk about the one tool in particular I'm going to highlight. And... First off, I have to apologize for my prep because I actually had all, today all set aside to get things going and my wife's car broke down today. So I had to drive about 45 minutes to go take care of that and get her back and running. Uh, I had to change the battery, which is not a big project, but it did set me back from being able to uh, practice a lot of this stuff. And I know that uh, Gas is going to be especially patient with me tonight. Right, Gas? So what we're going to do is I'm going to shrink the viewing screen down a little bit so that um, I'm going to try to practice using just a small portion of the window. Hopefully it'll make a difference for the viewing public and for this recording. So the tool that we're going to talk about tonight in the first off is a tool that's offered by TD Meritrade and is actually not necessarily one that they advertise anymore. And the name of the tool is Strategy Desk. Is there anybody in the room who currently uses Strategy Desk or knows what it is? Okay, so Paul says he's used it and I know that's only because he's installed every executable that ever got posted on the internet and added it to his collection. Is that about right? Okay. So if you have a TD Ameritrade account 
and if you were to go over to the section on software to download you're not going to see this so Paul says he didn't like it he switched to AP HPS with day trading radio of course he did that's uh, pretty much what everybody wants to do right all right so let me bring over this screen as soon as I can make sure that I've uh, turned something off here on my end and I'm going to show you this section on what TD Ameritrade calls their trading tools. Again, bear with me. I'm going to be much better at this on the next go-around. But if you were to log in to your TD Ameritrade page and take a look at the tab there called Trading Tools, uh, you're, you're going to notice the main tools that they are really looking to focus on, which mainly is their Trade Architect software and their Thinkorswim software. And of course, there's the, the mobile platforms. And part of this show that I'd like to do over time is to introduce you to the various tools that are available. We're going to highlight one tonight, and uh, hopefully it's something that will be helpful, uh, even as a reference for another time. And the, uh, the idea is to really present your options. We have a lot of experienced traders here, and I know you guys have settled in on some tools that you like, that you've gotten used to. And so um, this may not be something that is going to make you change what you're using. We have a lot of new traders that are asking a lot of questions about what to use, what's the best to use, et cetera, et cetera. And the fact of the matter is that you're going to find over time you're going to develop your own styles of trading. You're going to figure out what works for you, what doesn't work. Most would say you'd find out more often what doesn't work. And uh, you're going to gravitate from one tool to the next tool until you settle again on a setting that you like, uh, a setup that you like, and a group of tools that you like. We'll do an option show another time, Gas, all right? So I'm a thinkorswim guy myself, and in the survey that I posted, we had about, I would say out of the members who are in the room regularly, we had about a 10% response, which is actually pretty good. And as it turns out, the majority of the responses were to say that folks are using Thinkorswim as their main platform. So that's something that over time I'm going to uh, bring you some tips and tricks on how I use Thinkorswim. Uh, some things that you guys have seen before, uh, but maybe for some of the members they have not. So we'll be able to show that. And the second most popular one was um, was one that I'll bring up another time. You know what? I'm getting off topic. Let's stick to this topic here. So the software we're looking for is Strategy Desk. Now, up until about six months ago, these tabs used to have something like uh, TD Ameritrade, Trade Architect, Thinkorswim, and then there was an other tab. And you could take a look at a few dozen pieces of software it included quote tracker that you notice Johnny uses a lot and um, some of the other folks do uh, a few other charting software that have come along the way uh, software that's actually over time TD Ameritrade has been integrating into thinkorswim and so as they've been doing that they haven't seen the need to hold on to this software however uh, something like Strategy Desk, if you have used it, if you are using it, you may want to continue to use it. So, in order for you to get it yourself, if you're interested, is to go to this search box and type in the name of the software. It's called Strategy Desk. It'll bring up a Help Center window with questions about what it is. 
course you're searching for it so what is it and here's the option here number two download strategy desk when you click that the window behind changes and here's the options for downloading it's going to automatically start to download I'm just going to cancel that out but uh, you do have the choice here to download the executable and then there's three PDF files that you can also download at a later time to get a, a good sense for it. Now what I'm going to do tonight is show you how uh, I use the Strategy Desk software to get a feel for the market. So bear with me for a second because I did a good job of losing my ability to reach the screen here. So let's just move that off to the side. And if you're in the chat room and you want to ask me a question, I'm going to ask you to please send me a private message because I'll hear the tone and I'll also be able to keep track of which questions I've addressed already and which I have not. So let's just take a second here. I'm going to play a tune and get set up for this Strategy Desk software. Let's get on with the show, as they say. Glad you guys like that song. So, we're looking at a software that is called Strategy Desk by TD Ameritrade. And yes, this is being recorded. Anytime you have these shows that we've been broadcasting over live stream, the software records it and stores it locally on our computers. Uh, the next step, of course, would be to upload that to the server so that it could be available for everyone. But We'll make sure we do that for you guys in case you can't stay for the whole show or if an off chance you're not even in the room when we're broadcasting. All right, so let's take our window here. I'm going to bring it over to show you this software. It's called Strategy Desk. Now, when you first load it up, it's going to give you some default settings. And I realize that the video probably doesn't give you uh, a good sense of what's what's what um, trying to see how to use these zooming tools all right I see how that works doesn't really do what I thought it would but anyway so what you've got here is a basic charting software with a screener and we're gonna kinda of focus on the screener here as the main uh, part of this tool I will show you how the screener can be set up to give you some information on potential setups. And since the market obviously isn't open right now, you're not going to be able to see it populate throughout the, the video here. But I did take some video earlier today while it was live, and barring any crazy technical difficulties, I'll do my best to show that to you. So this software has uh, a screener, as you can see here. It has a tab for doing some back testing, um, which is not exactly something that uh, I do with the tool, but it is available. And then you have your basic charting software. And then if you do have an account with TD Ameritrade, you can even use this to place your, your trades. It does link in that way. So what I'm going to do is walk you through a setup for this software and how you might use it to uh, set up this screener the way I was talking. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to close these windows out. And when you have this blank canvas, you'll notice that you have all these buttons off to the side. And hopefully you guys can see this. And what these buttons will let you do is you can set up a, a level one screener, which we're going to look at first and then of course your charts uh, then you have your buttons to uh, go to level two trades time and sales and uh, 
I'm drawing a blank on what the A is for. Um, there's some news that you can look at. And down here you have your uh, your your trades, your positions, etc. And then when it comes to the charting, it's pretty fully functional as most of our charting software is these days to let you choose between your line charts and your bar charts and you have your different uh, algorithms that you can add and your time scales and your stretches and then of course you can customize it uh, for your use okay so first thing we're going to do is take a look at a screener so I'm going to open up a level one screener and you'll notice that it's not populated with anything right now I'm going to uh, delete a couple of columns to get this back to what you might see when you first load it up I won't go about reorganizing the columns but these columns will be in different orders uh, but this is mainly where we're headed uh, the default actually comes with a a, uh, a field for stochastics if I could remember where it is okay so you've got these custom fields that are on here and you'll see you've got uh, the five minutes stochastic and then there's also uh, a crossover on here and a lot of these are the defaults but you'll be able to see that you can go into the properties here and change these around as much as you'd like so what we're going to do is add a column over here which what I've been doing is right clicking on the headings and you have these info fields and so you can add a, a notes column for example and then this is almost like a regular spreadsheet where you can grab the headings and move them around and resort them the way you want I'm going to zoom this in a little bit just so you can see a little bit better now when you're using this in the software what you might find helpful is not to maximize this but to leave it free floating what do I mean by that well, most people are familiar with Windows software they have this, these the red X over here and then there's these two buttons here and not everyone remembers what they're for but the small rectangle here is the minimize which will shrink it down into the lower part of the screen it actually dumped it down there and the other option is the maximize which will then make it fill the whole window which is great but then I can't move it around after that so instead what you want to do is bring your mouse to the edge of the window and I like to use the corner because you get to stretch it both up and down and side to side and you hold down the left click and stretch it as you need it to be okay we don't have all these columns so I'm just gonna bring it down a little bit to show you what we're looking at alright I'm checking my notes again I apologize I would have practiced this a little bit better for you guys but I ran out of time today all right, so we added the notes, and now what we're going to do is load a symbol set. Now, the way you do that is at the top of the screen is your menus, and there's a level one menu option here. We're going to go to load symbol set, and in here it comes preloaded with symbol sets for the exchanges and for the indexes. We're going to go into the stock index, double click the folder name, and you'll see there's a few here to choose from and what we're going to take a look at is the NASDAQ 100 and open up that symbol set and you'll see that get populated on the screen and of course since the market is closed you're not going to see these numbers change but throughout the day the numbers will change here just like any watch list that you might have in uh, other software you're using so I'm just going to let this finish loading but you can see that the columns we're using here are the symbol the volume column which is the volume on the day and then the average volume here if I expand that 
is actually over 65 days. So it's the average volume on that stock over 65 days. That's important because if you are loading symbol sets and not just using your own private watch list, you may end up with a stock that's on an index but has a very low trading volume. And that's going to make it difficult for you to do any kind of uh, scalping trades. And I should mention that this tool here that, uh, that I'm going to show you as far as this setup, I should say, is really intended for scalping. So you can, of course, use this software to reconfigure it for swing trades. But the technique I'm going to show you is from a class I took on scalping trades. So you've got your average volume, you've got yesterday's close, the change on the day, the percent change on the day, and then your typical last bid and ask. The stock value here, stochastics I threw in, this is the K value on the five minute chart, which is uh, one way to look at the data. All right, so I rearranged the columns. And then when it comes to notes, you can left click on any one of these rows and right click. There's a modify option. You can change the symbol. Or if you double click on the note section is where you can make a change. So let's say, for example, we've got a software or, or a stock in here for the week that we want to make note is on the HPS we can add those notes in there and as this moves around on us it's one more piece of information that we can add to our trading all right so let's take a look at a column that we're going to use for scalping now I'm going to get rid of this stock stochastics K column over here and instead we're going to add a new column and it's under custom it's under color fields actually color fields and it's the last one here stochastic percent K and the default is a 15 minute slow chart or, or screener I should call it but we're going to use it we're going to use some of the settings in here and customize this. So I'm going to go into the column properties. And what we're going to do is we're going to change this from a 15 minute to a three minute. And we're going to change the number of bars instead of five. Now the recommendation is to use at least 40 candle, uh, 40 bars. I'm going to zoom in on this so you guys can see it a little bit better. But in this technique, I'm going to put 120 bars in here, and I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. For the formula, now again, this is going to depend on what your trading style is. And for this class that I took, I'm just going to put in the defaults. And then as you use the tool, if you decide to use it or you're using something else that does something similar, of course, you put in the stochastics you'd like. So I'm going to change this to a 14533 on the stochastics. The next section is the rules. Now the rules here are to color the bars when different situations arise. I'm going to show you a completely different set of rules. So we're going to remove all of these rules one by one. And then we're going to add rules back in. So the first rule is going to be less than or equal to 10 and we're going to show that in a green color and then we click add rule the next rule is going to be greater than or equal to 90 we're going to show that in a red and the next rule is going to be less than or equal to 50 that's going to be in black and then we're going to go the other way greater than or equal to 50 also black so you're going to see in a minute what these are representing but they do have to do with the 
stochastic charting as it's drawing these lines and the black section will be that center section of the stochastic where the stock is changing trend and it's going to draw these black lines. So I'm going to hit OK and when you first do this your columns here are going to be empty and you're going to think well I don't have any data. What good is this? Well you actually need to expand this column a little bit more to fit remember we went to 120 bars so you have to move it out until you start to see those 120 bars and you'll notice they started to show up now they're very small and what I'm going to do is I'm going to resort this heading by clicking on it and this is the descending value we're going to put it in a or I should say that's the ascending this is the descending value and so you've got the stocks here the uh, NIHD is the first one on the list and it's three vertical bars and then a void. That void is off of our meter so I'm going to move this column right up to the edge and when I do that that's going to create our right edge for the scale. So in other words based on the last prints that came through NIHD was in the lower part of the stochastics range, or I should say the upper part, an oversold value, and there aren't any of them in an overbought value. The, the greens would come first, and I'll show you that on the video that I'll play back for you. But you'll notice the sort order is to have the highest number of bars, and then this is three, and the next one is two, Actually, if I look closer, it's four, and then three, and then two, and then eventually one bar, and then some black bars. So that's the sort order. You know, it's going to play it from green to red to black, and this will become more clear as we're as I'm moving along. So let me just take a moment to do a little mic check. Uh, hopefully, I'm not just talking to myself here, guys, and I hope the information is useful. Again, this is the first show, so I appreciate your feedback. Feel free to send me comments in the room. I won't be able to make immediate adjustments today, uh, but I'll be happy to play some more music if you guys are, are getting bored with this. But it looks like everyone's uh, occupied with something else, and that's fine. All right, so this is how the chart gets set up. Um, let me just check my notes. I've got the column set up the way we want it and we've got the notes symbol and then what we really want is the stochastics to come next with volume on the other side so that's the basic sort order and then this gets expanded and you can actually move these down a little bit unless you need to see the data all the time uh, you can get a sense of what these numbers are throughout the day but if you're trying to save real estate, you can shrink that down. Uh, and for purposes of the demo here, I'm trying to fit everything on the screen. All right. So I appreciate you guys giving me those questions in the, in the private chat. I'm going to review that uh, one more time. We had a question about how to populate the list. And that was through the level one screen. We're, we're looking at a level one screener. That's what this window is. So you're going to use the level one menu on the top of the chart, uh, top of the window, and we're not loading a watch list, we're loading a symbol set. So you go to this option here, load symbols list, and then you navigate to your list. Okay, over time you can actually create your own list and then populate that. And thank you Coder, I appreciate that feedback. That makes me feel really good. I'm all warm and fuzzy now. All right. So let me just check my notes here. Okay, now that you have this screener set up the way you want, and I'm going to assume that you want it to be the way I just showed you, uh, you don't want to go through this every time you load the software, right? So what you want to do is go into the level one section here, and then there's an option for, 
I'm checking my notes. Okay, actually not under level one, it's under the columns section. And it's here, save column layout. So we've customized all these columns, we've changed their widths, we've got their descriptions. We're going to pick save column layout. And then it gives us our choices here to give it a name. So we're just going to give it a name. I'll call it Bry Guy Custom Columns. And then save. Okay? Now, if you really like this setting, and when you create a new screener, you don't want to have to load this particular column set again. You can then go back to the columns menu and pick the last option, set layout as default. So once you do that, now anytime you do a new, a new list, you'll notice, I should say a new level one screener, you notice it already came in with the columns that I wanted and with the order of columns that I wanted. So that's why you would set this up and then save it as a default. Okay. So now let's add to this, now that we've got our screener, the next step, and I'm just going to move this for purposes of the show. I'm just going to shrink it down. But our next step would be to get a chart going. So we come back over to the left side here, and we've got a button for new chart window. And we're going to click that. And this is going to load up with a default set of of charting. Now, again, because I've already set some of this up, I actually have a lot of these things uh, customized already. So I'm trying to show you what it might look like if you install the software for the first time. You might actually have uh, fewer tabs over here, for example. And you might actually have fewer studies. And then you've got your tracking window over here. So the idea would be that if you want to customize the charts, then I'll show you a few things you can do. So for example, this screen here, this gray box that's popped up here, if I were to right click on the chart, it gives me a list of choices. And you notice this group of four here, crosshairs, tracking window, snapshot window, and tab window. Well, I'm going to keep the tab window. That's at the bottom of this window. And I'm going to keep the crosshairs, but I'll turn off the tracking window and the snapshot window. And you'll see which things turn off when I do that. OK, and then we get back to what we had here. The other thing you can take note of is this little section here. You see these buttons that are up in this area? Uh, these are involved with linking to the screener, which is a very powerful tool. If you've ever used a watch list and a set of charts, you know how nice it is that they're linked together. This other button here is a pop-up button to take this window and remove it from the software. Now, if you're a trader that just has one monitor, you're going to still find this a useful tool because you'll notice that the program we're using has a lot of real estate being taken up by these little button bars at the bottom, or toolbars. You have your toolbars on the left, uh, the ones I showed you here on the right. And so when you start to use up your real estate with even these couple of inches here can add up. So we'll show you later about why it might be helpful to pop these out into separate windows. But for now, what I'm going to do is show you these tabs at the bottom. All right, so I have it set up with a D for daily tab and then a one minute, two, three, and five minute tabs. Let's say you wanted to add some more tabs. Where you would do that is here at the top where you have the uh, interval. And you simply can go through the drop down and pick something off the list or you could just type in a number. So let's say you wanted to add a 15 minute. I'm going to add 15 and hit enter. Now what's happened is my screen, or my window rather, has changed to a 15 minute chart. But at the bottom, those tabs are still showing daily one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, five. I want to add the 15. So you come here to the tabs, right click 
next to these tabs and then you have the option to add and what that does is add the current time frame to the tabs. So I've added 15. I'm going to come back up here and I'm going to add a 30 minute and then down here I'm going to add and then I'm going to also put in a 60 minute and I'm going to come down here and add. So you can add as many time frames as can fit over here and if they go off the screen you can start using some of these arrows to cycle through. But don't overcomplicate your trading. You notice that when Johnny's talking throughout the day he references mainly between a daily and a 60 minute and every once in a while he'll pull up a five minute. So there's different ways to trade with different time frames and uh, there's no sense overwhelming yourself with so much information that you get what we call analysis paralysis and you, st you don't trade because you're so busy researching and, and trying to analyze. Alright, so that's how the tabs work. The next thing we're going to do is change some of the colors here and remove some of these studies so we can get back to a basic chart. So what I'm going to do is right click these these uh, studies and I'm going to hit remove. So I'm going to remove that one and then the next one and then the next one which was two together and then this last one. Up here I'm going to remove these moving averages because in a minute I'll show you how you add those moving averages and uh, that should give us back to the default and the other thing I'm going to do is change our background so we come down here to colors and here's a whole list of parts to this window that you can customize yourself so for example the background instead of white we're going to change that to a black color and see what that looks like. Now, of course, you can't see the grid lines. Um, the bars are going to be black, but then the candlesticks themselves, the up candle, I like to look at a green, and down red is fine. Uh, color bars, when they're empty, are going to be white and let's look at our grid now it's probably not showing up too well on the screen but I'll show you how this works in the tutorial they choose black and then go into define custom colors and then take this bar to the right here and bring it up about 25 percent of the way it kinda gives you a dark gray color it's not exactly black but it's enough of a contrast and I just hit OK to see if it shows up on the screen. Um, it doesn't look like you guys can really see it but you can trust me it's there. And when you set up your own screen of course you make those colors any way you'd like. So I'm going to go back into the colors and look at the remaining ones. We had the grid was a little bit off black. The access which is the the vertical and the horizontal axis, I'm going to change this to red and make that stand out. And some of these others, the defaults I believe were black and I've just changed these to kind of a tannish, brownish color. The crosshairs, uh, the snapshot window, and some of the other sections. And then notes, if you add notes to the to the chart you want that to be a contrasting color so I'm using blue for that. Okay, so that's basically it for those charts and the custom colors. Then, of course, is the fonts down here. And by the way, I'm right-clicking on the chart if I didn't mention that. So here in fonts, you can uh, set that the way you'd like. I'm using a black font. And let's try a 10 color and see if that uh, makes it show up a little bit better. And actually, now that I think about it, it doesn't make sense to do black, does it? Let's change that back to white. There we go. Now we can see the numbers. So I got white and I have 10, so it's a nice big color. 
and we're looking at a 60 minute interval and so that's why the clock is the way it is if we go back to a daily then you'll see the days of the of the week are shown here and you can just like most charting programs you can grab the bottom here left click and then slide it over to compress it and expand it same thing on the side left click to expand it and contract it as you need to fit the data into the screen okay and the last thing by default the ch the crosshairs are not turned on so you're going to want to right click and turn on the crosshairs you see how that works that's pretty basic so now let's add some of the basic studies that we would want to have on our charts and again you guys are going to maybe see different tutorials uh, different folks here on the on the trader spotlights have different things they want to use um, let me just take a moment to mention on the show here I'm really not trying to show you trading styles per se that that's really what the trader spotlight is about and RPM does a great job with that but when it comes to the tools that we're using to trade with and how to use them how to make the changes so that it matches up against some of these trading styles that's kinda of what I'm focusing on so I hope it's it's something useful in that regard uh, if you've come late to the show I just want to mention what we covered early on is uh, where to get this software strategy desk is from TD Ameritrade you can still download it if you have trouble downloading it let me know I have the executable and I can figure out a way to get it to you I think it might even be small enough to put in an email but uh, it would be better if you got it directly from them what you do is go to the TD Ameritrade website and when the video of this show is uploaded you'll see me walk through those steps you want to do a search for the phrase strategy desk and in the help and when you do that it actually will take you to the page where you can download the executable and um, and then you can go from there and there's also PDF files that you can get access to the to the uh, instruction manuals and learn all the nooks and crannies okay so just working with this new microphone hopefully I when I use the cough button it does turn itself back on alright so we were gonna add some studies so what we're gonna first do is add a moving average now when you're adding to this chart there's two basic ways of adding things one is the add option and the other is the overlay option they're gonna give you similar choices but the difference is if you use add it's going to make a separate section of the chart and add it down there if you notice for example on Johnny's ES chart and he has the stochastics down below well then you want to use that as a uh, as an add however when it comes to the moving averages you'd rather have that right there next to the candles as they're getting drawn and so that's an overlay so we're going to draw some moving averages we're going to use the overlay option and we go into here we look for the moving averages which is up here and then you have your choices of simple we're going to start with a simple moving average we're going to make it a 15 length and the offset is going to stay at zero and the source will stay at close we're going to change the color to red and just bump the thickness up to 2. Okay? So there's a, a 15 period moving average. And we're going to add another moving average. And this will be, instead of simple, we're going to use exponential. We're going to put a 5. And everything else the same except we'll change the color to green and let me see maybe this contrasting green and a tooth thickness and add that on there now I'm <clears throat> just realizing that I have made my candle colors the same as the as the um, 
as this moving average. So let's take a darker color for the moving average and that, that'll make a better setup there. All right, just answering some questions from our members here. The way that I'm accessing this is I'm right clicking and uh, you just right click anywhere on the chart and that brings up this little sub menu with all the different options there. Okay, and right now we're focused in this uh, second section of it, the add, edit, remove, overlay. That's that's kind of where we're working as we're building this. All right. So we have our two moving averages. Now we're going to add a MACD, and MACDs are typically not an overlay to the chart. So we're going to use the add option instead. Here's our MACD, and we're going to use the defaults here 12 26 close <clears throat> we're going to change the color here to a green and the bump up the thickness by 2 we'll leave the signal smoothing at 9 and red just change the thickness to 2 the center line we're going to change to blue and I'll try to use that blue there We'll leave it at 1 and display. We want it to display the center line. And then the difference histogram, we're going to change that color to an orange down here. And we're going to leave these checked to display it and overlay the histogram. So once you do that, you'll notice there's your MACD on the charts there. And there you see the histogram as well. Now again, as I mentioned earlier, I'm just presenting some things that I learned in a class that I took and um, it's something that most of us have done over the years we've we've taken these classes and we just file the information away uh, and we keep the stuff we like and we get rid of the stuff we don't so this is one of those things where but since I've taken this class probably some of these intervals have been changed that uh, the way the market behaves today so don't feel like you have to lock yourself into some of these intervals that I'm presenting. Uh, it may actually be something that you should be using the intervals that Johnny's presenting or, or somebody else that you're following their style uh, in order to get the signals to come across in similar fashion. All right, so that's how that works. Uh, the next thing we're going to do, I think I covered... Okay, I covered that. Just going through my notes here. All right, next thing we're going to do is add a stochastics. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stretch this out a little bit. So I'm going to make sure, and by the way, that this has now got a white line across the screen or a gray line. It split the window. So the chart is on top where it says price in the upper left corner. And the MACD is on the bottom. When you right click, you want to make sure you're in the upper section so that your choices are affecting the chart and not the study below it. So I'm going to add and we're going to do a stochastics uh, section here. So let me find that and make sure make sure I'm using the right um, the right one. Okay. So here we go. We have a stochastic, basic stochastic, and to match it up with the screener, we're going to use the 14, 3 for the smoothing. I'm going to change the color here to yellow and a thickness to 2. On the percent D, we're going to change that to a 5 length, a color of blue, and change the thickness to 2. And under bands, we're going to leave it at 80-20. Uh, dark green, I don't remember if that was the default, so you go ahead and put that at 20. And the thickness, we can leave at 1. Or I should say, uh, put that at dark green and thickness at 1. Okay? So that adds the stochastic to the chart. And now we've got two sections here added. And we have a basic chart set up the way we want. Now, a couple other things you can do with this software is these horizontal bars are adjustable. 
So if you need to give yourself a little bit more real estate on the monitor, depending on what you have, and I just squashed the stochastics right off the map, um, you can adjust these accordingly. Okay, see how that works? So again, as everyone has different uh, setups, some people have a dozen monitors they're working from, some people have a laptop they're working from. Whatever works for you, you can make these adjustments to fit. Okay, as a reminder to everyone, I really appreciate the feedback. We had a survey that we posted in the room earlier. Uh, this is something just to give me an idea of the types of trading tools you're currently using. And also, I put a little section in there for some comments. So if you'd like to tell me about software that you're interested in knowing more about, I will do my best to book somebody who's familiar with that software, and we'll be able to present that on a later show and bring on some guests here so you're not just hearing my voice the whole time. Okay? All right. Got some uh, fans of the stochastics. I love that. All right, now, again, with the same thing with the column layouts. Uh, now that we have this chart set up the way we do, we don't want to have to go back and re-customize this every time. So you have the option up in here. Here's your chart menu. We're going to click that. And there's an option down here to save the layout. And it takes us to a section here on your hard drive. And I'm just going to call this Bry guy custom chart number one save that and now that's good to go and the second thing similar just like we did with the columns we're gonna go to chart and we're gonna put set layout as a default so now every time we load up a new chart which I'll do over here for example here it is um, I'll change the symbol just to show you it, it works with different stocks. Here's Apple. And so you bring up another chart, the studies are there, and the moving averages are there, just the way you set it up. Okay? And thanks for the feedback, Famous Designer. appreciate that. Big D, Rocco, McMill, Sonny, and I know there's others out there chewing on their cornflakes tune it into day trading radio I should mention this is um, August 21st 2012 and we're going to be taking this video when we're done I'll have to piece it together we had a little technical difficulties and the video got chopped off but I'll just add them back together and we'll post that into the forum for our members to be able to refer back to it at a later time so we hope it's uh, it's something beneficial all right, let me just take a second to show you about these tabs down here. Now, we talked about these tabs on the right side, which are the intervals of uh, periods of time that you're going to want to show these charts. The left side is a group of symbols. Now, it's preloaded now with uh, the Dow Jones and the NASDAQ. I have the OEX on here. But then you can also add stocks. So, I didn't exactly show this earlier, but at the top of the screen, we had used this interval option earlier. You also have a place to type in the symbol. So, let's say, now we already have Apple on there, but uh, let's say we have a week like uh, this week where we're looking at Capital One Finance. And so, even though we have that on our on our chart and even though we have that on our watch list, uh, we want to be able to bring it up at a later time quickly. So what we can do is now that we're looking at the Capital One Finance chart is right click down here next to the others and pick Add. And there it is. And if you want you can grab it and stick it over there next to Apple. So now I can click Apple and Capital One and the Dow Jones etc etc and just flip between them. And you notice, uh, since I wasn't looking at it earlier, it took a little few seconds to load the data, but the ones I have looked at are good to go. 
okay so that's how the tabs work it's kind of like a miniature watch list a miniature favorites as as it were and again depending on the real estate you have if you were able to stretch this window out you can have a whole bunch of tabs um, if you shrink the window and you can't really see the tabs you still have the arrows here and you can scroll through it like that and um, these other arrows let you move the chart back and forth but that's basically how that works now let me double check my notes here see where we left off and um, okay so one other thing that we can do is add a tracking uh, index as it were to our chart um, again if you've got real estate some guys have one monitor with a couple of tracking stocks uh, tracking indexes whether it be the Dow the ES the uh, gold uh, some people use the VIX whatever it is you can have that on its own monitor you can have it it's on its own wall if, if you can actually afford multiple monitors or a whole screen of monitors I mean a whole wall of monitors you can do that um, but what some may find useful is to be able to overlay a stock or an index rather onto the stock chart so I'll show you how you do that again we're looking at our basic chart we're going to right click on the screen here and we're going to do overlay and we're going to pick symbol and bear with me a second okay there's this uh, menu is actually not completely alphabetical because it's in different groups a top section a middle section and a lower section so symbols at the top of the of the lower section here so we pick that and we can set some colors for it. We're going to pick blue. Let's try, uh, hopefully not too contrasting this blue here. And we're going to put a thickness of two. And we're going to check off these boxes. Again, some of these I've already checked off from the last time I used the software. I didn't get it completely reset. But when you load your software, you want to make sure that these are checked off. So you've got display y-axis label. You want to have that checked. You want override formula with the chart interval. You want to have that checked. In the vertical scaling section, you want to leave this. Um, I'm sorry, you don't want to leave this. You want to change this to scale to other graphs. Since we're doing an overlay of a symbol, that'll help out. And under show as, we're going to leave that as normal and symbol override so what are we going to use in the example I was using um, they were doing the Dow but since we're looking at the uh, Apple stock here I'm gonna bring up the NASDAQ and use that as the overlay um, so you see what it did it took the NASDAQ it scaled it so it Obviously, being at 3,000, it's not off the chart here, with Apple being at uh, 660. And it uh, keeps it basically within the window. And the idea here is you can take a look at your stock that you're watching. Let's say it's Apple. Let's say we switched over to Capital One. And it'll draw that NASDAQ on top of it throughout the day as one more piece of information for your trading so remember you don't want to just look at one piece of information and trade off of that but you want to gather several pieces of information a lot of times you hear the word confirmation that's what you want confirmation trading isn't always a guessing game it's it's the best guessing game right guessing the best not just guessing so you want to piece together a lot of information as you can and take a look at Capital One I mean we're looking at a, a 60 minute interval here it is first thing in the morning where Capital One is spiking up and the Nasdaq did as well now maybe the Nasdaq's not the best uh, overlay to use let's see if I can edit the symbol let's use the Dow Jones 
Okay. So look at the Dow Jones. Didn't even give a, a clear a clear signal here for uh, what Capital One was doing or for what Apple's doing. So I think that's a vote for going back to the going back to the uh, Nasdaq. Let me see if I put SPX. There you go. There's the SPX, but it's not drawing that last. Uh, 60 minutes for some reason. There's 30 minutes. Oh, well, the market closed, right? I should pay attention to that. All right, so here you see we're uh, using the SPX now on here. And, you know, if the SPX is going to be pushing along strong and you're in this trade, then you might decide to stay in the trade. I mean, why sell off if the rest of the market is also continuing to push ahead? So it's an it's another way of looking at at the data, right? Okay, and yes, I happen to love cornflakes too. Uh, I do especially like the frosted flakes, but I don't understand what they've done with Tony. Tony's turned into uh, he's a beast now. Like he's been pumping iron and, and his chest is all nice and, and strong. I, rem I, I like the old Tony. He's too fit. All right. Let me get back to my notes here. So we've added the SPX to our chart. And again, you can add whatever you'd like to use if you want to... If Whatever you're looking at that day, if you want to put gold, you want to put... Um, you want to put Apple. You want to trade some of the smaller tech stocks and, and you want to put it up against Apple and see what Apple's doing because a lot of times that's what happens. You can trade those small tech stocks off of what Apple's doing. Uh, so you see how to do that. All right, let's add another couple of pieces to our puzzle. We're going to be in the upper section here and I'm going to right click. We're going to use the add option. And we're going to add some volume. So let's come down here right above where we got symbol. And we're going to pick volume. And we're going to pick our colors as green and red. Green for up, red for down. We'll bump up our thickness to two. And as far as the color is going to be based on the close versus, and we're going to change that to previous close and hit OK. And now we have our volume section down here reds and greens and what we're gonna do now is add an overlay to the study so we've got our regular volume I'm gonna right click in this section and we're gonna pick overlay and we're gonna overlay an average volume and that is right here a couple notches below regular volume average volume for 65 days and we're going to pick that and bear with me because I think my chat room just uh, crashed but that's on a different computer so hopefully it's not affecting what we're doing here I'm going to keep talking because I know my main desktop is alright but my laptop seems to be tired alright so we're going to add the average volume 65 days and what we're going to put here is a color of blue we're going to leave the thickness at 1 because it's an overlay. You want to check off these boxes, display y-axis label and override formula with chart interval. And in this case, you're going to leave these set to normal. The vertical scaling will be normal and the show as will be normal. And I'm going to hit OK. And now what you're going to get, and it's a little faint on the screen here, Maybe if I go over to Capital One, does that give us a different... Yeah, it's still pretty flat on this particular chart and this particular interval. I'll tell you what, let me switch to a daily. I'll bet you we get a better sense of things with the daily. Let that draw in. Okay. So here you have the daily on Apple. And what we've done is we've overlaid a 65-day average, volume average, on the chart. 
And so you can see here the last three days has crossed our average volume. And it's, it's really tremendous what's occurred with Apple in the past week. Um, but again, another piece of information, it's staying above the average. Obviously, a lot more attention is, uh, is going into things. So, just give me one second. Looks like my computer has uh, caught up with itself. But for whatever reason, my chat room has uh, crashed. So I'm going to reload that. And I want to take a moment here to do a little shout out to Paul at uh, RPM. Uh, the man works tirelessly for the station, as most of you know, if not all of you. And I appreciate the work he did this weekend in getting me set up with the settings for the show. And one minor thing that he took care of in the last couple of months, I wasn't on the day that it occurred, so I don't know how much attention it was given, but it used to be that when you reloaded the chat room window, or for whatever reason you weren't logged in and you had to, you click the chat room and it asked you to log in at that point, that what always seemed to happen was it would load some default setting for the chat room which was not the chat room that you picked so for example I always picked the flash chat and when I would click on the chat flash chat and for whatever reason it asked me to sign in after I signed in it would pop up with a Java chat or an HTML chat I don't even know which one it was but it wasn't the one I picked so I'd have to close it out and go back in and pick the chat room again and then it would load up properly and RPM I know he's got all that free time on his hands but he's actually went in there and figured out where that setting was and got that little tiny setting changed so that it carries over whichever chat choice you've made and I, I really appreciate that it's a minor thing it's uh, probably a little bit of a geeky thing that I even noticed it but um, Thanks a lot, Paul. Appreciate that. All right. Another thing with reloading my chat room is that I lost any additional questions you guys may have posted in the past uh, three or four minutes. So if I haven't answered your questions and you're still waiting, please just send me a private message. It'll pop up separately for me on my end, and I'll be able to keep track of whose questions I've answered and whose I have not. All right. So getting back to our software here. So now we've got our chart. We've added the average volume at the bottom. And uh, you can keep adding things. I'm going to leave it at this. In the tutorial, they even added an on-balance volume. That's another tool that you can use. But I'll leave it at this. And then, like I said, once you have it set, you can grab these horizontal bars and reorganize this however way you need to in order to uh, to fit on your screen. So I'm just grabbing the horizontal left click, hold the left mouse click and drag up and down and you can just organize that any old way you want. Alright, I'm getting a question about accessing the software. You need to have a login to access the software. So as far as having a funded account, I don't really have an answer for you on that. Um, in my situation, I have a funded account so I can get into this. I will tell you this. This is part of their older software. So if you are using Thinkorswim, it's likely that you have been upgrading your system along the way. Um, now, if you've never switched over to trading futures with Thinkorswim, or trading uh, the Forex with Thinkorswim. It's very possible that you're still on their older their older servers. Uh, what happened was at some point when they started doing uh, Thinkorswim and getting heavy with the futures, they brought in a different clearinghouse and in order to link the systems together and also carry over their Thinkorswim customers that they had since they bought the software. If anyone doesn't know that, TD Meritrade bought Thinkorswim, the, the company, and carried over their clients and the software. Um, but if you're still a Thinkorswim customer, you're really kind of separate 
you're out there on your own, separate from TD Ameritrade. Uh, they haven't exactly merged you completely. And a lot, frankly, a lot of the Thinkorswim customers prefer it that way. But um, just to let you know, when you upgrade your Thinkorswim software so that you can trade futures and you can trade the Forex, and they called it the orange upgrade at the time, then you lost the ability to log into the strategy desk. So what to do? What to do? Well, you can open another account. And that's actually how I'm logging into this one here. I have another account that I'm using. And that one, uh, as of yesterday, I had them dumb it down into the old um, connection because I actually hadn't been using this software for a while. But I wanted to show it to you guys as an option. And I do see some of the comments in the room here about having to pick. So yeah, you do kind of have to pick uh, from your main account. But if you like what you're, what I'm going to show you here at the end, and it's something you want to make use of as a tool, then either number one, you figure out how to do it with your current platform, or number two is you get yourself a separate account that you can uh, have them dumbed down, so to speak, so that you can run your strategy desk. Okay, I hope that answers the questions here. So, where were we? Adjusting the height of the studies, and I think we got the point there. Um, and then once again, you can save the charts. I'm going to go up here to the top window. I'm going to pick Chart, and I'm going to pick Save Layout. And I'm going to put uh, Bry Guy Scalp Chart one and save that okay so it's got all our our stuff in there and then you can also go back to chart set layout as default and now it's in there for anything new so again when it comes to real estate we've now got a chart that we're trying to keep on the screen I'm gonna shrink that down a little bit Put that over here. We've got our screener right next to it. And again, because I'm on the uh, Procaster here and I'm trying to share this out to you guys, I'm trying to keep it zoomed in enough where it seems realistic uh, rather than me going through and changing the fonts so that when I show you my whole screen, you can still read the fonts. But you guys get the idea of how this works. So you just would adjust these windows as you need to. Um, and what we've done here is we've got our uh, Apple chart right here. And I'm going to move this up and show you how you can then come over here to the left. Just expand that so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to pick the chart button. We're going to get a new chart. And I'm going to take that chart and resize it and put it down here in the lower section. And then this one, instead of Apple, I'm going to make this a Dow Jones chart on its own. And if you wanted to, you can go in and take away some of the studies, if that's what you want to do, and just have your Apple chart with all your studies and have the Dow by itself. So the next thing is about linking our screener on the left with one of these charts on the right. Now the index chart that I want to look at all the time, I'm going to have that unlinked. So you see here, there's this red button that says SYM. If I left click that, I get a little drop down and it gives me uh, some choices to group these. I'm going to leave it disabled link, that's the red. The Apple chart up here, however, this I do want to link, so I'm going to color that. Let's just for purposes of the demonstration, we're going to pick group number one, which is the pink one. And then we need to link that to the screener, which is over here. So we're going to pick the symbol over here and also pick group one. Now, what does that do? Well, before we had to change our symbols at the top here. If I wanted to bring up, and if you look at the last few I did, if I want to bring up Akamai, our chart changes to Akamai. If I want to pick uh, Cisco, the chart changes to Cisco. But now that I've linked the screener, what happens is, if I click on 
one of these rows, for example, the first one here, NIHD, then my chart updates to NIHD. Can you see that, guys? I'm going to zoom in a little here. Maybe this will show it up a little bit better. And maybe not. Oh, there you go. Okay, so it didn't clear up. All right, and then you just go to the second one, Vertex, HSIC, FFIV, okay? Now here's the beauty of this. Once you're clicked into one of these rows, you can park your mouse to the side and use your keyboard and move up and down with your keyboard in order to get into some of these things and into the charts. I'm reading the char chat room here and uh, Paul, uh, I realize you weren't in the room at the time but I talked about the uh, generous man that you were that you said you were going to uh, send a uh, $20 gift card to Amazon for everyone that, that uh, filled out the survey today and I really appreciate that you offering to do that. Such a, such a generous, generous guy. Uh, really appreciate that. And I see that you've been out on the grill uh, appreciate that you have taken the time to feed your family uh, the really most important thing that you can be doing for your family really appreciate that and as far as the chat room we were just talking about my chat room on my end uh, not not uh, oh fixing the chat room yeah you, you'd fix the chat room Paul didn't you do that um, mentioned that you said it so that if I refresh the chat room or for whatever reason I had to log in on the chat room that it then took me to the actual chat room that I picked instead of going back to that default chat room of I think Java chat or whatever it was anyway you know what I'm talking about I have to get into all that all right back to the screener so like I said once you've clicked in here and you've got a row highlighted you can then use your up and down arrows and you will notice how quickly it scrolls through um, you know, my rows are moving off of your screen there, but I am going down. And this is the NASDAQ 100. That's the symbol list that I loaded. And what you guys are going to notice is that um, over time, you can build this into any kind of a watch list that you want and make it so that it's uh, it's your own. We talked about the, the note section. Like I said, you can click into the note section. Um, I'm left double clicking into the note section. If you want to just highlight something, let's say is on the HPS for that week, you can throw that in there. Um, and I'll show you in the video in a minute uh, that these stocks are moving around on here throughout the day. So it's actually kind of cool that you can see the HPS where they're falling within the hierarchy if there's some attention uh, needed to get into that particular stock. Okay. So let me just check my notes again and see what we've uh, been looking at. All right, the buttons here, I was trying to remember the A. The A is the uh, active, um, you know, what they might call the big board. So if you want, you can bring up the uh, NASDAQ big boards on a, let's say, five minute interval. And that should, uh, well, I don't know if it's going to populate now because the market's closed, but that's the purpose of the A. So that's another tool that can be used within the software. Most of our software that you guys are using probably have that, um, but you can use it for the stocks that are most actively traded that day. Uh, sometimes you want the top five, the top ten, whatever. That's just another option for you to use. And then the idea is if you wanted to, you can set that to a different color group and then you can uh, up here set that to let's say green and then get your second set of charts here and uh, instead of having this disabled you can make that green and now these two are linked together and you can as you scroll down that list you can uh, get your chart updated so that's why there's multiple groups you have up to eight groups that you can link between a chart and a watch list or a screener in this case. Another thing of course with the charts is you can have multiple charts of the same link but have them set up to show a different interval. 
So I'll show you how that works. Let's move our window over to my uh, desktop. You guys can see my desktop over here. And let's say, for example, I take the uh, chart here for FFIV, and I'm going to show you how to use that gray button there, this little pop-out window button. You click on that, and what that now does is takes that window, it moved it off to the left on me, um, and it sets it so now it's it's a little more free flowing. I think I ended up double clicking it, so bear with me here. I'll try to single click. Okay, there it goes. Now you see what happens. It actually can move off of the strategy desk platform and become its own window. So now I can set that up over here. Let's say I minimized or I sorry reduce that a little bit. I come back to my software, I pick another chart. I make my uh, link the pink so it is still my FFIV but instead of the interval on this one which was let me see if I can get I may have to open it up. Alright that's a daily. So instead of a daily let's say we did that as a five minute chart. Shrunk it down. Then we're gonna pop this one out. Put that next to it and make that a three minute chart. And put that next to it. And then got a third one if we wanted to. Make it pink and made it a one minute. Popped it out. So I think you guys get the idea that you can take this and now we have these are all linked back to the original symbol list which I have over here when I clicked on the symbol list we lost uh, one of these windows so let me shrink uh, shrink this down a little bit okay so I saw the symbol list let me pop out the symbol list so I can show you how this might work you can take this and put it down below which is off your screen let's try doing that okay so now you've got the three charts up here one three and five minute time frames and down below we can click on our different stocks on the screener and notice what happens up top all three are getting updated and we can then use this to quickly scroll through our list, our screener list, and see what the charts look like. Maybe if you're looking for an entry position and you want to know which one of these are lining up together. That's what you would do in order to do that. Okay? Now before I get to the video, I'm just going to show you briefly how these lines are working in relation to the charts up here. Now the column we built is called a three minute stochastic. That's the interval that we picked uh, in the settings. So let me get rid of the one and the five because that doesn't, uh, it's not going to be accurately matching up. And here's our three minute. And I'm going to just try to reduce this down a little bit, hopefully have it show up on the screen for you guys a little bit clearer okay I don't know if the text is readable but I think you guys at this point get the idea so what is this column doing remember we set it for a hundred and twenty uh, hundred and twenty bars and we set the interval at three minutes so it represents 120 times three minutes of data which is 360 minutes right if I have that right so you have yourself six hours of data so starting in the morning you're actually going to be getting some of the data from the previous day uh, that's behind it so what is this data showing well, every time the stochastic 
comes below the the 10 line. Now I know on our on our stochastic we actually drew an 80 and a 20 line, but in the settings for the column we put a 90 and a 10. Remember those ranges we picked? We said if it's going to be less than 10, draw a green bar. If it's greater than 90, we're going to draw a red bar. Well, this is where that's coming into play. So as these bars are getting drawn every three minutes, it's mimicking what's going on up here with the stock. So for example, here at the end of the day, now let's see, we're looking at a three minute and this I believe should be matching up to what we're looking at here at the end of the day. As the stochastic was moving in that section between the 90 and the 10, it's in that black section and so it started drawing black lines. This isn't inactivity in that area. This is actually a black line that's getting drawn. That's the color we picked. You could have it put blue if you wanted, but we picked black. So it is actually drawing data there, but it's not showing up on the screen since the background is black, and it makes it so that we're not paying attention to that particular stock as this group of stocks are getting resorted here in these columns. Once the stochastic gets into that 90 area or above 90 now it starts drawing a red line and here you'll see that we had three red lines and it brought the NIHD to the top of the list why is that happening well you notice at the stochastic here that the stock has reached an over I want to say it right an overbought condition hopefully you guys can confirm I, I said the right one so since it's in an overbought condition, it's a setup for all things being equal for that stock to take a breath and move down off the top of that stochastic. So remember, we're doing this is for scalp trades. And when you're scalp trading, you have to look at the overall trend. So you're going to want to pay attention to what the other uh, what, what the rest of the market is doing. Uh, I might have grabbed, okay, it's actually, I just expanded this, and uh, this is aftermarket here, so we don't have the overlay of the SPX like we did before. Um, just was confirming that. But remember, during the day, you're going to be seeing the overlay index, whichever one you picked, and you're going to want to trade with the trend. Uh, unless there's some news out on that particular stock, you don't want to be trading in one direction or, or another blindly. So you want to trade with the trend. But you'll notice what's happened is as this stock has moved into that upper band area, it started to draw these red lines. And when it did that, you'll notice it's starting a crossover. That yellow stochastic is crossing o over the blue. And you guys, if you have your own software, you can confirm this with the NIHD. And you notice what it did at the end of the day is it turned over. So uh, that's how this that's how this works. Let's take something like uh, Vertex, which had several red lines here a few hours ago. And what I'll do is look for that section on the stochastic and. Uh, I believe this is it right here because it kind of flattened out at that section and so you notice multiple red lines were printed now if this was a live trading uh, moment here I would this vertex would likely be sitting near the top of this section because these bars are getting painted from the right side just like our charts are being painted from the right side so going to the left is the past and these red bars here, when they were getting printed, being that there were so many of them, the more there are, then the higher on this sorting list they will appear. And so here's Vertex would have come to our attention that it was reached an overbought condition and due for a pullback. And you'll notice that that's what it did. It pulled back from, uh, let's see, my crosshairs 
because I changed my windows here. They're not giving me the price, but um, you know, fifteen forty and change, let's say, and then moving down to or fifty four forty, moving down to maybe fifty four and a quarter if you held on to it till down here. Now, as far as the example to show you the red bars and the overbought and the oversold uh, tonight, because the market's not open, uh, just take a look at this during live trading and you'll see what I'm talking about. The reason I say that is because this trade would have been hard to take. It's after hours. Am I reading that right? 1430 uh, would have been near the day. If not after hours, um, you know, the volume down here isn't all that great. So, I mean, a 10 cent move, it's not like you might have exactly taken it for a 10 cent move, but you could have. It's there. Uh, let's look at one down here that's got a bunch of green bars. Here's, uh, looks like Chesapeake. No, no, Checkpoint Software. So here's Checkpoint Software, and look what it did. You have this time here where it came down and stopped printing the black bars. It started printing green bars. And sure enough, it was sitting down in that range. Uh, of course, the, uh, the MACD was still showing a downtrend, so maybe you would have waited until the MACD started to give you a confirmation signal. But again, as these green lines are getting printed, the idea is that it draws your attention to that stock. Maybe you check the news on that stock. Maybe you've got, when you, when you have day trading radio on, you, you're going to hear Mr. Land make a comment. Perhaps he makes a comment about the level for that stock, the price level. Uh, if you're using some of the other tools that we'll be talking about in future episodes, you can gather all that together to add to your confirmation here that it's a buy signal for this stock. And maybe right about here as the yellow was crossing over the blue, uh, I don't know what the, let's see if we scrunch this back a little, you notice we have a little support here, perhaps a double bottom uh, from this morning at 1030, around 5021, 5020. So maybe you decided to get in at that point. And if you did, and you're in at 5020, and you took it until you reached the top, maybe you held on it overnight, or maybe you closed it at the end of the day. Uh, just as uh, these things were peaking out, you got out at about 1550. That's 30 cents. So that's uh, that's the purpose of this tool. And if I scroll through the rest of these. Again, after hours, a lot of the stochastics were in the middle of the range, so it printed a lot of black uh, data. But notice back earlier in the day, you've got lots of green repeating, lots of red repeating. Here's Apple, which was a beast today. It just, uh, you know, it didn't it didn't stay overbought or oversold. It just kept uh, it just kept plugging along. And again, we're looking at the three-minute interval here. And the reason is we're looking at scalp trades. Apple gave signals for different reasons, maybe not necessarily for a three-minute uh, scalp trade for this purpose. Uh, maybe on a one-minute, you had a different uh, different data. And you could set the screener up to be for different periods if you'd like. Uh, the recommendation from the class that I took was not to use this for swing trading. Uh, there's just different behaviors when it comes to swing trading that this data is not exactly helpful for that. So just keep that in mind. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a moment. We're kind of reaching the end of the show of where I'd like to keep the show to about two hours. And, uh, you know, we did have some technical difficulties in the beginning and got me started late. Uh, my fault. I just want to, again, thank RPM for all the help he did in getting me set up technically. I want to thank uh, Johnny, Day Trader Rockstar, for allowing me to have the show here tonight and uh, giving me access to this forum. Definitely appreciate it. And thank you to you guys, you members out there. You really do help us out in the room. You help us out with your comments, your feedback, and the positive way that you help one another out with your trading. Uh, it's really greatly appreciated. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up a video musical interlude. I tried to uh, keep it as some calm music there. Got a little problem with my mouse. It's been uh, double-clicking a lot on me. 
probably got to adjust the sensitivity somewhere. As RPM knows, most of us tech guys end up suffering through the nuances before we finally get around to fixing a darn thing because we're so busy fixing everybody else's machines. Anyway. So here's the video I have. I'm going to uh, play this video. There's no there's no sound with it, so I'll just kind of talk you through it. And um, believe me, it's several hours of data, and I'm just going to increase the speed on it. So it's going to kind of play at a I don't know if it's one and a half rate or or what exactly it is, but what you're looking at is in the top section here is the active. Uh, NASDAQ shares. So today the number one active was Facebook followed by Cisco, Yahoo, Sirius, QQQ, Apple, Urban Outfitters, Micron, and Intel. Um, kind of a crazy group, right? But anyway, this is why you can have this set up to look at uh, the yellow linking to charts for your actives. But the more interesting one that I wanted to show you guys was down here, and that was the screener. So I'm just going to zoom it in here a little bit. Hopefully the text will show out. So actually at the time I did this, uh, and actually while I recorded this, I was trying to add some symbols to the charts. And I was just having a little uh, drop-down menu of choices there. And you can actually... Obviously, this was populated originally with one symbol list, which was the 100 off of the NASDAQ. You can look at the defaults and choose as many of these as you'd like, and then eventually build your own data set. What I actually did was I, I started loading the um, different indices, and then I combined them together. I believe you can open them up in Notepad, and just as long as you give them a delimiter of a comma or something along those lines... Uh, it should work fine. If you guys get stuck on it and you'd like me to help you, then uh, just reach out to me in the forum. Uh, you can send me a private message, or when you see the link for this show get posted in the forum, I, I hope to do that in a couple of days. Uh, for my first time doing it, it's going to take me a little bit to get used to the process. Plus, I'm going to have to combine the first 20 minutes of the video where we had it cut out on me. Uh, but anyway, so feel free to either post to the comments or send me a private message in the forum and uh, you can reach out to me. If you want my private email, uh, I'll be happy to give that to you too. Just send me a private message in the chat and uh, you can email me. But at any rate, I'd be happy to help give you the combination files that I've already done with the symbol sets and get it over to you. Now, remembering that this is playing at a little quicker speed than usual, what you're noticing is OIS is sitting at the top of the list and you notice the green bars are getting drawn one after the other after the other so what does that mean that means that the stock stochastics was sitting right at the uh, bottom of the channel and you'll notice OIS just dropped off the list where did it go well let me pause the video for a moment and explain to you again uh, what I couldn't really show you earlier is the sort order that these are in. If you, when you create this column, if you click on the column heading, just like in uh, Microsoft Excel or, or some other spreadsheet programs or even in your watch lists, you can click on the column heading and it'll draw a little triangle if you can see that there. That's pointing downwards, so it's uh, it's in its default mode to present this in a, I believe that's considered a descending format. So what it does is it takes the stocks that have the, the most green lines, and that comes first. So OIS used to be on the top of the list. What happened? A black line was drawn. That means the stochastics have now moved out of that 90 section and there it came below the 90 and so it printed a black uh, bar instead of a green bar and dropped it down the list. So the top of the list are all green bars, whichever ones have the most green bars. And you'll notice from this list there's about, you know, it's hard to tell even on my screen, maybe six, drops down to four to three, 
uh, to two and then to one green bar you see here and then it starts with the reds so these are stocks that have multiple red bars again it's a three minute interval and multiple red bars are then drawn uh, while the stochastics is sitting in an over uh, overbought condition and setting up for a potential short and then it starts with the black bars so these are the ones with the uh, uh, I should say the lower amount of black bars I mean it's really convenient the way they've done this so you've got one black bar and multiple green bars VFC was likely one black bar multiple green bars ITMN one black bar multiple green bars eventually you get to stocks that have multiple black bars multiple black bars and then the red bars etc cetera, etc cetera. so the point of the screener here is really to kind of give you a focus list it's giving you during live feeds and I'll hit play again is it's giving you the uh, live action and a focus on the top dozen or so stocks in whatever symbol set that you're dealing with and as the day goes on uh, these are going to jump around and you know we're getting to the end of the show here so I'm not going to um, try to bring up a chart and have us figure out where this was when I took it but I think you guys can go back in the early mornings I think I started this around 11 o'clock or so um, in fact I wonder if the uh, let's see if I click on the file name here no, it's giving me the time when I stopped it. Um, so then we can do some math, right? Let's do properties here. So <clears throat> it was created 10 hours ago. All right, so that's uh, 5 to 12. Uh, no, I'm looking at the wrong thing. The clock, it's 10 o'clock right now. So noontime. All right, so there you go. About noontime. Like I said, 11.30. I think it was a little before noon. So you can look at the charts on your software and take a look at the uh, these stocks that are populating here now. Here's gold coming in. Uh, MasterCard apparently was drawing a couple of lines and soda. But actually right around now, here's noontime and the stochastics is sitting in the middle section there. Uh, you know, barely moving off the top bar, barely moving off the bottom bar. And what happens at 12 o'clock Eastern? Isn't that when some folks are taking lunch and therefore the volume is drying up and the activity is not really there for you to trade, right? So unless you were really watching OIS and maybe took a trade in that or VFC and took a trade in that, you might not find anything to trade around that time, okay? So that's basically how it works. I hope you guys enjoyed this first episode of Tools of the Trade. I want to say thanks again to Day Trading Rockstar for allowing me the time here in the forum to present the show to you. I hope you guys found it educational, informative, and I look forward to your feedback in the forum or if you want to send me a private message. Uh, either way, if you guys enjoyed it, if you felt the pace was too slow or too quick, um, I'm really I'm doing this for you guys. So I hope it's something that, you know, if I rush through this as quickly as I know how to do it, uh, maybe maybe half the, half a dozen people will be able to follow it, but the rest of you will be lost and and you won't come back for another show. I want this to be a show that you guys will feel enjoyable and that you'll tune in each week. And if for one week you can't make it, at least you know that the, the episodes will be there, TiVoed as it were, for you to, to watch it again. Okay, so I appreciate the feedback, guys. Uh, it sounds like the, uh, the pace was good for you guys, and uh, I do appreciate that. Wingnut, RJ, Stock Bandit, Sonny, Paul, Gas, if you're still out there, and uh, Michael Freeman. I appreciate all the uh, the help you guys give and the support you give to Day Trading Radio. For those of you who might see this on YouTube, uh, please look for the link that we have below the video to visit daytradingradio.com and uh, sign up for the two-week trial. It's really, you know, a lot of sites I've been to, they have the free trial, but they limit what you have access to during that free trial. So you really don't have a chance to evaluate the membership properly. 
but not here with daytradingradio.com. Johnny really uh, sends out the watch list. You're going to get that every week. You're going to have access to the forums. You can go ahead in there if you wanted to spend the time, knock yourself out, read all the forums, download all the videos, and uh, I think you'll find it to be quite beneficial. Don't forget, tomorrow, market coverage starts at 9 a.m., sometimes a little earlier, for uh, Johnny Day Trader Rockstar. So tune in for that. And also, don't forget Thursday, we've got that Ultimate Trading Showdown Championship coming up between Airman and Athen. Looking forward to that. Guys are going to be trading, as, uh, as I can read in the notes there, it looks like you guys will be trading real money in the accounts. Uh, don't know if you walk away with any of that money, but <laughs> you will be really live. So hopefully the feel and the pressure of live trading um, is there. And really that pressure shouldn't be too much pressure because if you're, if you're a good trader, you've practiced, you haven't jumped into this uh, and just started willy-nilly because you went and watched one video on a, on a YouTube channel or, or even this video for that matter, but you've built up some practice time, some confidence. Uh, any new trading method, you should take at least three to six months to, to practice with before you go with live money. And... Um, yeah, Paul's uh, confirming the real money starts against uh, Day Trader Rockstar, which will happen possibly next week, I believe, once we get ourselves a winner to the uh, to reach to the ultimate finals. I know we call this the finals, but it's re really exciting about this. So we had a nice little bracket. Look forward to the time in the future when we get another bracket put together. So that'll be pretty good. So I'm going to sign off now for the show. And I'm just going to trail out for a couple minutes and answer some of your questions, but I'm going to cut off the video here right about now. This is Bry Guy from DayTradingRadio.com coming to you on August 21st, 2012. Thanks for tuning in. Okay, so I'm going to let the video keep running, but answer some of the questions here about volunteers. Coder, yeah, actually I am. I had uh, posted in the room a survey. Coder, I don't know if you had uh, posted to it. RPM's throwing a couple of the links in there, but if you click on that bit.ly link, that'll take you to a survey. And I've actually started to line up some folks. Um, you know, I've got some material that I can present. I tried to do, I was going to do Thinkorswim, but you know, we've had Thinkorswim several times already with Chris Hall and myself and I believe uh, Joel may have done one and, and some other folks. So I didn't want to just back it up with a whole nother think or swim show but i do want to get into think or swim in greater detail we have a lot of new members now and i'd be very happy to show you some of the tips and tricks that i've learned over the years i know we have some uh, coders in the room who like to uh, use the think script option and we'll certainly uh, show that rpm of course right on the ball with his statistics there so yeah plenty of think or swim shows are loaded up. I'm pretty sure quite a few of those are in the forum that you can take a look at. Uh, I love Thinkorswim myself, but then again, you know, it doesn't mean it's the best software out there. And so the purpose of this show is really to expose us as traders to the various tools that are out there. Uh, sure, you can go online, and, and for every one of these tools, you can go in and uh, watch the tutorials. There's tons of them out there. Just about every single ones of these softwares have tutorials. Um, but what I find is that talking to somebody who's got real hands-on experience is where it's at. And uh, I hope to bring that to you in future shows. I've had a few people give me some... Uh, uh, feedback saying they'd be willing to do a show. I'm not looking for anybody to, you know, be in the chair, let's say next week, you better be ready to go. No pressure like that. But, you know, we're getting into the, into the fall months here and uh, maybe the schedules will be a little bit differently. Um, but definitely, if you're interested in being on the show, you can fill out that survey in the room or if you want to shoot me an email, uh, shoot me a private message in the forum. You know, you can do the instant messages there, or you can send me an email, which is uh, Brian, B R I A N, at com, 
and I'll be happy to uh, talk to you about which software you like to use and we'll get together ahead of time so we get the technicality set up with the team viewer so you guys can share out the uh, your desktop live on the air and then we can take it from there okay and don't feel pressure if you have something you want to say you want to show one feature 10 minutes 15 minutes you just want to show one feature of the software that you found to be useful please let let that be something you do um, it, it's not like you have to be here for a whole two hours uh, like I just did okay but I think it could be fun enjoyable and uh, eventually too I've got Skype set up here and I'd like to get it to a point where we start taking calls and you guys can ask some questions live on the air and we'll do our best to answer them by showing you how some of the software use uh, some of the software works okay so again thanks guys for everything I'm gonna I'm gonna put the tune on that we had at the opening of the show because uh, you guys uh, seem to like that a lot this is from Virginia Coalition and uh, maybe I'll have some more of their music uh, at another time this is uh, Bry Guy signing off after the song finishes out I'll switch it back over to the live uh, station so Enjoy. <laughs>